The picture of the body of a young boy washed up on a Turkish beach put the spotlight on the plight of millions of migrants trying to flee to Europe. Aid agencies have been struggling to cope, so we wanted to find out what it's like on the front lines of the crisis. Joining me in studio is Zaid Al Rani, CEO of Islamic Relief Canada. Islamic Relief is the largest Muslim relief charity in the world. Thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me. Can you give us a sense of what you have seen as you are out there doing your work across the entire region? Overwhelming. Overwhelming. I mean, if you, it's in Iraq, it's in Turkey, it's in Lebanon, it's in Jordan. All across the neighboring countries across the Middle East are shouldering the mass bulk of the burden from this crisis. And the refugees are, are spilling out Turkey, Jordan, Iraq, with different challenges in different countries. And each of those countries has its own rules of, of how refugees are, are allowed to be treated or can be treated or what you can and can't do. But ultimately, these people are just trying to live, and there's millions of them. I mean, nobody thought it would last this long. Mm -hmm. And so our teams, initially, the initial reaction was just, OK, this is a bit of a blip in Syria, um, so we need refugee camps, we need tents, we need to provide food, water, make sure that people have hygiene kits and they can keep themselves and their families clean and safe. Um, and it's just, it's, it, but now, you know, years later, it's a much more complex crisis than that. Years later, and knowing the uncertainty that they face, one can't help but think about what goes through their minds, how desperate they would have to be to even take on this journey, to leave what they know is home, to go into the unknown. I can, you can imagine the anxiety. Yeah. You're, you're forced. None of these people who are taking this trip, this trip or this trek think it's a safe thing, it's a comfortable thing. They know they're risking their lives. Right. They've heard the stories, but it's so desperate. Their plight is so desperate inside Syria, if they've been internally displaced, outside Syria, they've been languishing in refugee camps, mothers, children, fathers, thinking, really, this is the future? This is the rest of my life? This is indefinite? And so all they want is a better life for their children, for their, you know, for themselves. And, and, and that's why they're just taking this dangerous, dangerous leap. It's really dangerous leap. What do you make of the European response or lack of response? I mean, it needs more humanity. A lot of people, I've, I've you know, been picking up the newspapers and reading here and there, and people are saying, we have to share this burden you know, across Europe. And really, it's not, it's not a burden, it's a responsibility. It's, it's a global responsibility. We have to share this responsibility collectively as humanity, because these are you know, really our brothers and sisters. They're not you know, people who they dream like we dream, they hope like we hope, they fear like we fear. And we have an, a responsibility to kind of reach out and say, we are lending you a hand. We know you're desperate. We know you're not dangerous. We know you're just trying to live a life. And so the European response has been slow. It's been extremely slow. But we're, I mean, it seems this sad, this tragic, tragic, tragic picture has galvanized public opinion, which has then affected world leaders globally, both in Europe and across the world. Here in Canada, what can we do to help people get through the red tape to get through some of the barriers are there small things that we can do or do they have to be you know as big as sponsoring someone there's there's actually uh, so many things that can be done um, both here in canada and overseas and we're as islamic relief we're in both we're, we're trying to respond to the refugee crisis here making it easier for people who want to sponsor making it more palatable making helping people who are here you know the the cultural shock of landing in canada from you know firstly syria then a refugee camp for so long is is so difficult for some families and so we've launched two appeals an appeal to help the, with the refugee crisis in uh, eastern europe and an appeal to help syrians who are either here syrian refugees who are here who, or who need to get here and and it's a 2 million dollar appeal that we're launching and really train, saying to people there are things we can do. You don't so it's have a fundraiser. To, it's a fundraiser. You don't have to just, you know, uh, or you, it's not tapped or capped at the people who can afford the 26,000 right, right. who have, you know, a basement. And there are things most people can do to support the Syrian families. And we're working with diaspora communities. We're working with local community-based organizations across the GTA and across Canada to try and work out best ways to support people who've either bought families or who are anxious about, can I do it? Can I actually bring a family and host a family here in Canada? Am I just going to be left by myself or are there, is there a support around me? And that's what we're trying to do, find ways to support people who've taken that very brave leap. 
Zaid Arani, I'm so glad you were able to talk to us today. Thank CEO you. of Islamic Relief Canada, thank you and thanks, thanks for the work you do. Thank you. Appreciate it.